Good morning, friendship. Let us stand on our feet and give the Lord a hand praise on this morning. It's truly, it's a blessing to be here on this day. God blessed us with a great revival, and now he's blessing us to be here again today. We'd like to welcome you, and those who are viewing live stream will welcome you as well. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, it's once again we come before your presence with thanksgiving on our hearts. We thank you, Lord, for keeping us from one Sunday to this Sunday. And we're asking you, Heavenly Father, that you would bless this service. Bless the hearts of those that are present, those that are on their way, viewing live stream. We pray right now in the name of Jesus that you would even bless the man of God that's going to preach the word on this day. We pray in the name of Jesus that you would have your way. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. Friendship. I am Junior Deacon MJ West. You understand what Junior Deacon Janice Spellman and we're a devotion team for this morning. Today's today's scriptures come from Romans twelve chapters one no Romans twelve verses one and two. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye pre present your body bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your re reasonable service, and and be not conformed conformed to this world. But ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye that ye may prove that what is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Amen. Please bow your heads and close your eyes. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for another day. We thank you so much for every single day you allow us to see. Thank you so much for waking us up this morning, starting us on our way, and allow us to, allow us to see another day. Today was not promised. But I thank you so much for making this day promise. It took a lot of strength to make this day uh, happen. But I thank you so much for pulling that strength to make this day happen. We're going to be here celebrating your name. And we thank you so much for being here, letting us eat, letting us do a lot of activities. I thank you for myself and other people in this church who came out today. This morning, I know a lot of people didn't come up this morning and they're probably watching the live stream, but I still thank you so much for all the people who came and who's watching too. I pray that they receive the message that is going to be happening today as we preach. So I thank you so much, Lord, Father God, for another day. And in Jesus' name, I do pray. Amen. Yeah. Now you're in the hands of our music ministry. Amen and amen and amen. And again, we say amen. Come on and put those blessed hands together. He woke you up this morning. He started you on your way. He got you here to give him all the praise. If he got you through something, say amen. If he got you through something, say amen. If you love the Lord, make some noise. Come on, we've come to praise him in this house today. Hey. Yeah. 
First of all, first giving all praises to God, honor to Pastor Trotter, ministers, deacons, and the lovely Sister Trotter. My name is Angel Crawley. We are here to recognize the following students for the many accomplishments throughout the school year. Today we have Logan Thornton Evans. Logan is a... <laughs> Logan. Logan is a fourth grader at Savannah Elementary who is continuing to grow her academic settings. Her teacher says she is a pleasure to have in the classroom and is a big advocate for helping her, her classmates when, when they are struggling with schoolwork or personal and emotional challenges. Her teacher recognized her efforts by awarding her class ambassador, student of the week, and student of the month. She is a, she is a big voice in the neck. McNair School Choir, and they perform at various high schools in the district. Her director often asks how she, she learned how to sing so well, and she replies, I sing at choir at church. At, at church, Logan is a part of Awana, the youth choir, the Daughters of the King ministry, dance ministry, and a main helper for navigating service in children's church. She enjoys attending rehearsals and ministering on Sundays. She looks forward to learning more about God's word throughout, through, throughout the ministry. Logan is the daughter of Sister Michelle Thornton and granddaughter of bro brother Alfonso and Sister Marilyn Thornton. <laughs> Next, we have Matt, Melanie Sadler. Melanie is a sixth grader at, sixth grader, eight honor roll student at Durham Middle School in Denton County. Melanie is one of the leaders in AVID, and she was recognized and nominated by her school to go to the Junior National Young Leaders Conference in Washington this summer, a premier uh, leadership de development program for middle school students. We are, all, we are so very proud of Melanie as she, con as she has come a long way from being a shy little girl to a fearless leader. Melanie is the daughter of Kayla Bitha and the granddaughter of Kevin Bitha, and Sylvia Sales. <laughs> Next, we have Layla Brannon. Layla is a senior at McKinney High School. She, ha she has made AB honor roll all school year. She recently earned a medal and a score of four, the highest you can earn in, high in the high school visual arts scholastic event for her charcoal drawing. This semester, Layla was a student of the week and a Dennis Baker State Farm Scholar Artist of the Week. She is the member of the Golden Girls of Spear Group. This fall, Lay Layla plans to attend the University of Oklahoma and major in ad advertising. She is the daughter of Deacon Greg and Deaconess Teresa Brennan. <laughs> Let's give our students a round of applause. The Dr. Angela Peterson Ford Recognition Program recognizes the students in preschool through all college university the, and graduate schools for their many achievements. If you, would like, if you would like your student to be recognized on four Sundays, please complete the submission form on the website at www.fbctc.net or submit an email to achievements at fbctc.org. Now, we have some exciting news. Senior, it's scholarship time. There are seven scholarships available and the deadline is May 12, 2024. Don't miss out. Tickets are currently on sale for 2024 Devs and Bows for Christ Bell Ball on April 28, 2024. Limited seating and limited numbers of tickets are available. Get yours today. For youth in grades nine through 12, the deadline is fast approaching to, to register for the 2024 College Road Tour on June 25th through 28th, 2024. The total cost is $100 per person. Sign up today. To get more information about these exciting events, go to www.fbctc.net scholarships or send an email to scholarship at fbctc.org. Thank you. Good morning, friendship. We are thankful and grateful again to God for blessing 
and allowing us to be here today. One more day that we've experienced God's grace and mercy. Amen. He's kept us since we last gathered. Amen. Not only that, but there are a lot of people that laid down last night, but were not able to get up this morning. But God's grace and mercy kept us. And I don't know about you, but I am truly thankful and grateful to God for his grace and for his mercy. Amen. We say to each and every one of you, those who are members, those who are visitors, welcome to friendship today. Because out of all of the places you could have gone, the Lord led you here. And we are thankful and grateful for your being here. Members and visitors, please come back and wish you with us again. Amen. You say, Pastor, why do you say that? A lot of times we take too many things for granted. Amen. Every now and then, amen, we need to let, amen, the members know that we appreciate them as well. Amen. Now, I know y'all, y'all are city folk, y'all, y'all don't know anything about this, amen, but, but there are things called hunting dogs, amen, and, and they go out and they do the hunting, amen, but, but, but what encourages them is every now and then they want to hear the voice of their master saying, sick him. Amen. And, 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 and when that master encourages them, it makes them hunt just a little bit harder. Amen. So all I'm doing by welcoming visitors and members, I'm just saying sick him. Amen. I'm encouraging you. Amen. So that you'll know that you are important, needed, and necessary. Amen. We thank God for our junior deacons this morning. Amen. For our youth ushers and, and for our youth choir. Amen. We thank God for our young people today. Just want to remind you of just a few things. Amen. This coming Friday, we will be having our Good Friday service at 7 o'clock. Amen, as we will be, our ministers will be standing, of the, uh, preaching on those last words that Jesus spoke from the cross. Amen. 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 So this coming Friday evening at 7 o'clock, we invite you to please come and join in with us in our Good Friday service. On this Wednesday morning and Wednesday evening, we will be having our Bible study, and we will be talking about Passion Week. Amen. You know, we talked about that last year. Amen. Easter has come again, so we need to remind you again. Amen. Of what Jesus went through during that week as he prepared to go to the cross. Amen. Repeat after me. Repeat this after me. If I was the only one, Jesus still would have went to the cross. And that's the way we have to look at it. If you were the only, amen, if we were the only one, if you were the only one that was lost, Jesus still would have died just for you. That's how important one soul is to God. Amen. So, so we'll be talking about Passion Week, all that Jesus went through on our behalf. We are continuing to pray for Sister Cookie Smiley and for her family, that God will continue to give them strength, comfort, and peace. We are praying for Sister Oropian that God will continue to move like only God can move. Amen. We are praying for all of those who are on our prayer list. And we, again, we thank God for our youth revival and the success. Amen. <laughs> Pastor R. John Robinson and how he encouraged the heart of our young people. Amen. At this time, at this time, our choir is going to come back, render two more selections, and when they're finished, we'll come and share our message for today.
All right, all right. Come on, let's get some praise in this place. Uh. Let's get on one accord. Yeah. Leave all your problems on the outside. To be consumed with the Holy Ghost fire. Open up your mouth and lift the name of Jesus higher. Say, Are you ready for the Are you ready? 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 to say, hey, Lord, I love you, no one above you, just put the hands together, say, hey, oh, yeah, this is my song right here, say, hey, yeah, I know it might be tough to get your praise on, trials of life and cursing you all week long, if you don't have a reason to praise them, let me give you one. With the rising of the sun, say, Are you ready? Oh. Are you ready? Say, Are you ready? 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 Are you ready?
first book of the New Testament, St. Matthew, chapter 21, and we will read the first 11 verses. St. Matthew chapter 21, verses 1 through 11. To have it say amen. amen. And when they drew nigh unto Jerusalem and were come to Bethphage, unto the Mount of Olives, then sent Jesus to disciples saying unto them, Go into the village over against you, and straightway ye shall find an ass tied, and a coat with her. Loose them, and bring them unto me. And if any man say aught unto you, ye shall say, The Lord hath need of them, and straightway he will send them. All this was done, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophet, saying, Tell ye the daughters of Zion, Behold, thy king cometh unto thee, meek, and sitting upon an ass, and a coat, the fold of an ass. And the disciples went and did as Jesus commanded them, and brought the ass and the coat, and put on them their clothes. And they set him thereon. And a very great multitude spread their garments in the way. Others cut down branches from the trees and strewed them in the way. And the multitudes that went before and that followed cried, saying, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And when he was come into Jerusalem, all the city was moved, saying, Who is this? And the multitude said, This is Jesus, the prophet of Nazareth of Galilee. May the Lord bless both the reader, the hearers, and the doers of his word. Father in heaven, we thank you for another Palm Sunday morning. Another time that has come where we remember the days before Jesus went to that old rugged cross. We thank you, Master, for ever being reminded of what Jesus did on our behalf over 2,000 years ago. You sent him, he came, and he fulfilled everything that you assigned to his hand to do. So now as we share just a word of encouragement with your people, we pray to let the words of our mouth and the meditation of our heart be acceptable in your sight. For Lord, you are our strength and redeemer. In Christ Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord as we give God glory, we give him honor and praise. The God who is the head of my life, and I pray yours as well. Thank God for Jesus Christ, my Savior, the precious Holy Spirit who dwells within me and every believer. We thank God for our ministers and our deacons and our visitors and to all of you who are gathered here in the house and those who are joining us on our different media platforms. We greet you today in the name of Jesus. Before I go any further, we want to say to Brother Ernest Hurdle, happy birthday. Amen. Amen. Now, now, now they wrote on the paper how old you are, but I'll let you tell how old you are unless you want me to tell the world. 88 years old. Amen. Uh, 
And when you see him walking around moving here at the church, he does not walk and move like, amen, an 18-year-old, amen, amen. He does not move like he's 88 years old, amen. God has really blessed him, amen. From those verses of scripture that, that I read, I want to talk about victory declared before the event. Amen. Victory declared before the event. Today, we celebrate what is called all around the world in Christianity as Palm Sunday. This is the day we commemorate the triumphant entry of Jesus into Jerusalem. The word triumphal means commemorating or celebrating victory. This event that we call Palm Sunday takes place one week prior to the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus the Christ from the grave. Palm Sunday marks the beginning of the Holy Week, the final week of Lent according to our Christian calendar. All four gospel writers, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, record this Palm Sunday event. It was on that Palm Sunday, over 2,000 years ago, that Jesus presented himself to Israel as their promised Messiah and King. He did this by the way he entered into Jerusalem on that Palm Sunday riding on a donkey. Now all around the world today, Palm Sunday is being celebrated by Christians. In many Protestant churches, children are given palm branches and then they walk in possession around the inside of the sanctuary while the adults watch and remain, remain seated. In the Roman Catholic Church, Palm Sunday is commemorated by a solemn procession of the clergy, the acolytes, and the parish choir, and then followed by the entire congregation. In the Philippines, communities reenact Jesus' triumphant entry with a procession. This event in Christianity is considered a very important event as it sets the stage for what would happen just a few days later on a Friday. We celebrate Palm Sunday once a year, but the Bible tells us that after the rapture and Jesus takes his church out of the world, every day in heaven will be Palm Sunday. You see, Revelation 7, verses 9 through 10 states, After this I beheld, and lo, a great multitude, which no man could number of all nations and kindred and people and tongues, stood before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes, and watched his palms in their hands. And crowd with a loud voice saying, Salvation to our God, which sitteth upon the throne and unto the Lamb. See, Jesus not only declared victory before the event happened on what we now call Good Friday, he celebrated the victory on that Palm Sunday. King Jehoshaphat in Second Chronicles chapter 20 celebrated victory before he went to war. You see, he didn't wait until the battle was over to praise God, but he set dancers and singers in the front. And on the way to the battle, they began to sing and praise God. And when they made it to the battle site, they didn't have to fight because God had already fought the battle for them. You see, God had already told King Jehoshaphat that the battle is not yours, but, but the Lord. So, so when we know who it is 
that's in control of our situations and circumstances. We don't have to wait until the battle is over to shout. You see, we can shout the victory because God is the one who's in control. So no matter how many times we read, hear a sermon, or hear the Palm Sunday story, it ought to renew the joy of our salvation that we each have within us. <clears throat> it ought to renew within each of us the reminder to not wait until the battle is over to shout and praise God. But we need to learn how to praise God and shout, not after the victory, but on the way to the battle that we are about to face. I believe that, that we need to learn how, amen, to send some praises up before we get to our job. Amen. We need to even learn how to send some praises into our house before we get there. Amen. Somebody ought to get what I'm trying to say. Amen. Because if we learn to send praises before us, amen, we will find things not as bad as we thought they were going to be. So if you don't mind, if you don't mind, and I'm going to be quick today if the Lord say the same, if you don't mind, let me quickly share three things that this first Palm Sunday revealed. You see, God had purpose for this first Palm Sunday. So first of all, this first Palm Sunday revealed, fulfilled prophecy. Amen. Zechariah 9 and 9 states, Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, thy king cometh unto thee. He is just and having salvation, lowly and riding upon an ass and upon the fold of an ass. You see, when Jesus rode into Jerusalem on that donkey, he was fulfilling the prophecy of Zechariah 9 and 9. By riding on a donkey, Jesus is making two statements. First, he is declaring his kingship. And secondly, he's declaring that he came in peace this time. You see, the Jews wanted a king who would set them free from Roman rule. But what they failed to realize is that they needed, amen, just like all of us, we needed a Savior to set us free from the power and grip of sin. Yes, Jesus came as Messiah. Yes, he came to set them and us free from the power of and from the grip of sin. And, and because of that, we ought to be thankful for the coming of Jesus Christ. So by riding into Jerusalem on a donkey, this symbolized the fact that he came in peace. There will be a time. There will be a time, according to the book of Revelation, that he will come riding on a horse. But this time he comes in peace. So for Jesus to ride in Jerusalem upon a coat is to declare that he is a king, proclaiming peace, and that he is fulfilling the prophecy of Zechariah 9 and 9. Let me share this with you concerning, amen, Jesus riding on a donkey. You see, even that donkey recognized who Jesus was. Amen. Even, even that donkey recognized who Jesus was and who Jesus is. Amen. Even the donkey recognized who Jesus was and, and who Jesus is. Amen. If a donkey can recognize who Jesus is, why shouldn't you and I recognize who he is. Watch this. This was a donkey who had never been ridden. Amen. As a matter of fact, it was a young donkey. It was not an old donkey. It was a young donkey 
amen, full of energy and full of life. But, but when Jesus sat on him, uh, he recognized who it was that was sitting on him. Watch this. Jesus sat on the donkey, but he's taking up residence within us. Do you recognize who's on the inside of you? Amen. We ought to at least have donkey sense. Amen. Amen. Sometimes that's all we need if, if we just need to have donkey sense. Amen. We, we, we ought not to have to be broke all the time. Amen. In order for somebody to walk with us. Amen. Sometimes, sometimes we just ought to have donkey sense and, and, and recognize who's on the inside inside of us. So, 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 so Palm Sunday revealed, fulfilled prophecy. Amen. Secondly, because of their Good Friday request, this, 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 this first Palm Sunday revealed, amen, that the words of the people on Palm Sunday didn't match what was in their hearts. Amen. This is the second point, is their words didn't, didn't match what was in in their hearts. Their words didn't, didn't match what was in their hearts. Their words didn't match what was in their, their hearts because it only took a few days to reveal the hearts. Their heart, watch this, on, on Palm Sunday, words came out, but a few days later, their heart was revealed. You see, see on this first Palm Sunday, according to verse 9 of our text, they cried, Hosanna, to the son of David. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. They said, Hosanna in the highest. Amen. The word Hosanna means save now. But their expectation was for Jesus to save them from Roman rule and, and not from their sin. But, but Jesus came to save them and us from our sin. Amen. My, 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 question, my question is, does your words match what's, what's in your heart? Amen. Because on, I'm almost done. Because on, on, on Friday after Palm Sunday, their words went from Hosanna, 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 to crucify him, crucify him. Does your word match what's in your heart? You see, Good Friday revealed what was really buried deep in their Palm Sunday heart. Amen. On, on, on Friday, amen, their Palm Sunday words then match their Good Friday word. Amen. You have to be careful. Amen. How we allow. Amen. Anger to bring out of us what's really down in our heart. Amen. And, and, and a lot of times when we say things, we, we say them trying to hurt people, but what we don't realize is it hurts us. Because it's, real, it, it's revealing what's really down on the inside of us. Amen, amen. If Jesus is really down on the inside of you, amen, even when you get angry and upset, Jesus still ought to rise up and come out rather than the other side of us. Palm Sunday, amen, brought forth. Words from their mouth. But Good Friday exposed what was really in their heart. Sunday morning, amen, brings forth, amen, praises from our mouth. But Sunday afternoon through the next Sunday morning reveals what's really down on the inside of us. Amen, amen. It reveals what's in our hearts. So, so this first Palm Sunday revealed, first of all, the fulfillment of prophecy. Secondly, it revealed that their Palm Sunday words didn't match their Good Friday request. And then thirdly, 
That first Palm Sunday was Jesus declaring victory before the event. In all of our sporting events, the parade is held not before, but after the event is over and a winner has been declared. In politics, celebrations take place only after a clear winner has been declared. Fathers pass out cigars, not before, but after the baby is born. But Jesus didn't wait until the event was over to celebrate victory. But Jesus celebrated victory before the event ever took place. On Palm Sunday, before Good Friday took place, Jesus celebrated victory. You see, on Palm Sunday, before Resurrection Sunday morning, before it took place, Jesus celebrated victory before the event took place. Good Friday represents sin's debt paid and paid in full. Easter Sunday morning represents victory over sin, death, and the grave. But Palm Sunday was Jesus' declaration that the battle has already been fought and our victory has already been won. And it happened even before the event ever took place. Jesus knew that Good Friday was coming. He knew that on Good Friday it wouldn't look like victory. But he also knew that Resurrection Sunday morning was coming. I need to tell somebody it might not look like your victory is there. It might look like you are going down for the last time, but, but I want to encourage you to remember the one who holds you in the palm of his hand. And because he holds you in the palm of his hand, you, you can't go by what it looks like. I believe somebody can testify that they found themselves in a situation when it looked like you were going down for the last time, but you are still here today because you can't go by what it looks like. If, if you don't mind talking to the person sitting next to you, amen, tell them you can't go by what it looks like on Friday. Amen. Tell, tell, tell the other person next to you so they don't feel bad that you can't go by what it looks like on Friday. You see, you see, you see, Friday represents the dark days in our lives. Friday represents those times when we can't see our way out of where and what we are going through. Friday represents the place of impossibility. But I want to encourage all of us this morning by saying these words. It's not over until God says it's over. God always have the final say. Can I close by telling you the story? Amen. They led Jesus up Calvary's hill. Looked like it was all over. Nail nails in his hand. Nail nails in his feet. Pierced him in his side. Look like the hope was gone. Look like Jesus was a fake. Look like he was an imposter. But tell somebody standing next to you, you can't go by what it looks like. Yes, he died that Friday out on that hill called Calvary. The disciples were disappointed. Others who believed in him were 
disappointed. But what they forgot is he said the story is not going to end on Friday. He said, destroy this temple and in three days I'll raise it up again. That's what he did bright early on Sunday morning. What we call Easter after having been in the grave for three days. He got up out of that grave with all power both in heaven and in earth in his hand. I'm so glad that that's not how the story is. He'll send it back to heaven where he's now seated at the right hand of the Father. And because of the rest of the story, I can live and deal with what I have to deal with. Because when he left, guess what? He left me a promise. You got to claim it for yourself. He left me a promise. When he left, he said, I will return. And I'll come back and I'll get you one day. Jesus is coming back. And he's coming back for me. You've got to claim it for yourself. Mom and daddy dead and gone, but they can't help me. Grandma, gone. Can't help me. My, my old pastor and wife, gone, but, but they can't help me. But guess what? Who can? Jesus can. And I believe that one day it's going to all be over. And when it's over, I believe that I am going to be with the Lord. Amen. What we deal with down here, we won't have to deal with no more. Stop getting angry at folk. They just, they're just acting like their father's children. I'm talking about the devil. Amen. We get angry at folk. We, they're just acting like their father's children. We've got to act like our father's children. When they did all they did to Jesus, what did he say? Father, forgive them. But they know not what they are doing. People don't know what they are doing when they are messing with us. Guess what? They don't know who they are messing with. You are messing with a child of the king. You are messing with the child of the most high God. And this same Jesus who rose and went to heaven, one day he's coming back to get me. Today I want to encourage you by saying to somebody, victory was declared by Jesus before the event. Before you and I can get out of here, we need to do the same thing. Today I already have the victory. No matter what happens, no matter what I go through, no matter what I have to deal with, guess what? Victory is already mine. Our choir sings a song, victory is mine, victory is mine. Victory today is mine. I told Satan. Did you tell Satan today? Did you tell him today, get thee behind me. Victory today is mine. Do you know the reason why victory is yours today? Because Jesus got up. And because he got up, victory is already yours. May God bless you and may God keep you in my prayer. Declare that you are free before the event happens. The doors of the church open. There may be someone here today who's out of the ark of Satan. That means you don't know Jesus in the pardon of your sins. You never profess nor confess the hope in Christ Jesus. Today is a mighty good day. Mighty good day to get to know Jesus. Church membership, candidate for baptism. You want to be saved, you're lost, and you've never accepted Jesus as your Savior. Today is a mighty good day to change that on Palm Sunday. Amen. You can declare your victory today just as Jesus rode in victory on Palm Sunday. While our young people sing, if there be one, will you come?
Amen. The invitation is always ours to extend, yours to either accept or to reject. We're going to prepare our minds and our hearts for Sunday school and then be ready to come back for our 1030 worship service. Don't forget all of the announcements this Wednesday morning and evening Bible study. We will be looking into what Jesus went through in what we call Passion Week as he made his way to the cross. Did it just for you. If you were the only one that was lost, he still would have died just for you. That's how important one soul is to God, that he would send his son to die just for the one who was lost. Nobody would be able to stand before God and say that I didn't have an opportunity, I didn't have a chance. Because at some point in time in everybody's life, God allows them to know that he's real. Would you please stand? Amen. Again, don't forget your tithes and offerings. Our deacons and ushers will be standing at the door ready to receive your gifts back to God. Please continue to pray for those who are on our prayer list. And we look forward to seeing you throughout this week for the things that we have here at Friendship. Amen. I believe what we have in a picnic or something Saturday. Easter festival. Okay. And, and Easter festival this coming Saturday here at the church at 10 a.m. Amen. We invite you to come bring the children, bring the community. Invite your community to come and to share with us in this Easter celebration on this coming Saturday. Amen. An Easter festival. Amen. Children and those who are still acting like children, you are welcome. <laughs> Amen. To come and to share with us. Amen. Father in heaven, we thank you today for Jesus, for all that he went through on our behalf. With nobody but just me that was lost, Jesus still would have come and he would have died just for me. And that's the way we all have to look at it because salvation is individual and it's personal, even though it's available to the entire world. So we thank you for Jesus and him laying aside his robe in glory, knowing what he had to face, knowing what he had to go through, knowing what he had to suffer, knowing that he was going to be separated from you. Yet he came because he loved us just that much. And I'm glad that Good Friday happened, but I'm glad that Good Friday is not the end because Sunday morning came when Jesus got up out of that grave with all power, both in heaven and in earth, in his hand. And because he ascended back to heaven, one day we'll be in heaven as believers with him. So we thank you today, Master, for this season of being reminded of what was done so that we can make it to heaven. Now, Lord, as we prepare to leave this place, let us ever be mindful of the God that we serve, the God who protects and the God who keeps us. We ask that you would do that for us in the name of Jesus. Keep your hedge of protection around us when we don't even know what's going on, Master. Thank you for your angels that are there all the time keeping and protecting us. Even when we don't deserve it, they are still there showing grace and mercy. So we thank you for your grace and mercy being shown in and upon every one of our lives. Now may the grace of God and the sweet communion of your Holy Spirit, may he rest, rule, and abide with us until you bring us together again. Let every heart sing together. Thank you.